Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vago Maradian here at the Navy League's annual Sea Air Space Conference and Trade Show. Right outside Washington, D.C., the number one gathering of U.S. Navy leaders and indeed international uh, Navy leaders to discuss strategy, policy, uh, technology, budgets, and more. Our coverage here is sponsored by GE Marine, Huntington Ingalls Industries, and Leonardo DRS. And we're here on the GE Marine stand to talk to George uh, Avisis, uh, who is uh, the Director of Marketing and Business Development uh, at uh, GE Marine. George, uh, it's always a pleasure. It's almost not a show unless we have an opportunity to talk. Um, look, tell us a little bit. Um, you know, we we spoke uh, have uh, spoken Surface Navy Association uh, a little bit about uh, the frigate program. Obviously, that looms large in everybody's minds. Uh, some of these plans are getting clearer in terms of the competitive landscape. The Navy is looking at all sorts of propulsion options uh, as well for its integrated propulsion source of the future. The Navy is increasingly looking at diesels. Historically, the U.S. Navy went from steam to gas turbine propulsion. It has stayed with gas turbine, even though some other navies have had combined gas turbine or, or uh, gas turbine and diesel for long-range cruising, the, the turbines for high speed, and now increasingly looking at perhaps all diesel plants. Um, talk to us about the value case you guys are making to the Navy as the, the guys who build the LM2500 and that series of engines of which, what, 1,400 are in service right. around the world right. in like 30 navies. Tell us a little bit about the argument and the case you're making to the Navy leadership on sort of, you know, why, from your perspective, they should be sticking with uh, a, a, a gas turbine as opposed to a diesel-only power plant. Okay, well, great, well, good afternoon. The key reason is, is with respect to gas turbines, it really does boost power. It gets you at high, high speeds and reliable. They're much more reliable than uh, an all-diesel solution. And from the standpoint is having small diesels coupled with a gas turbine, for example, with the Code Dog, is a very attractive um, solution. Use a small diesel at low loads or low cruise speeds, we spend 80% of your time for the fuel efficiency. And then you use a gas turbine when you want to be at high power and high speeds and you want to get there reliably. Um, we did an analysis and most of the world's navies use a small diesel with a gas turbine on 80% of its ships. There's only two ships over 4,000 ton that are all diesel. And I think they do use gas turbine in combination because it's a surface combatant. And there's many other reasons to use a gas turbine in a surface combatant. Um, and uh, do you have any cl uh, greater clarity from the Navy on the kind of integrated electric propulsion drivetrain that they want, right? I mean, there, you know, there's been a lot of discussion about it. There are a lot of contractors who are interested in that part. Leonardo DRS, one of our other sponsors, is also right. playing in that space, as is L3, uh, one of our other sponsors who are, who are in this. Talk to us about, you know, whether, you know, you know, I know that the Navy is constantly having these conversations with you guys. Where, where do you sense where the Navy's head is on the program? I like what the Navy is doing on the large surface combatant. What they've done is they've put out an RFI that has gone out to the shipyards, which is good but they've also gone out to the equipment suppliers and asking for their ideas, which I think is very smart. So if you look at it for GE, we're GE Marine, we're also teamed with our GE Power Conversion Group. So if you look at it from the perspective, we have the motors, drives, high voltage system, gas turbine generator set, and more importantly, with all that equipment expertise, we can integrate the, the system. And if you look at it from the perspective of the Navy, they don't want to go to a small four megawatt gas turbine generator set up to very large units because you have a high ramp and power. So we think by using multiple LM2500s, be it 22 megawatts, 26 or 30, you have room to grow. And the key thing is, Vago, that we're doing it, is we're putting those gas turbine modules in the same length. So we fully address what the Navy's looking for is future growth with, uh, with making it ease to make those changes. Um, you know, that um, marks also a kind of a step change in power generation because historically you've got K501s and things like yeah. that which you're using for hotel generation which are smaller, whereas the LM2500 was always a primary driver. Right. Um, you know, talk to us a little bit about fuel consumption concerns, because historically the Navy has liked diesel generators, you know, because, you know, they say, well, from a consumption standpoint, it's a little bit better. But you guys also drive higher power levels. So talk to us a little bit about that mix and how that plays into, you know, relative advantage for you guys in terms of power and where you fall on fuel consumption, for example. Okay, so the key point, bringing it back to the frigate with a diesel versus gas turbine is usually you use a small diesel with a gas turbine, and the small diesel helps 
with the uh, low loads in very fuel efficient versus an all diesel. The other part is a gas turbine has considerable weight advantages. You save over 100 metric tons per ship. You could use that, that weight advantage to have greater payload or a greater fuel, uh, bigger fuel tank that you can have greater endurance capability. You can spend more days operation at sea. So it's more about cost and it's also very much about operational capability. And then on top of that, you get a gas turbine that has superior noise and life cycle, a lower life cycle cost. So that's how it addresses on, on the frigate. On a large surface combatant with all electric, you have multiple gas turbines where you just bring up the amount of load that you need. So you don't have a very large gas turbine operating very, at low loads. You have a right size gas turbine that addresses your fuel efficiency needs. And, and uh, you know, when you, uh, you, you've mentioned reliability a, a couple of times, you know, is that a quantifiable, you know, wa walk us through, you know, what kind of reliability rates, uh, in, and a lot of this obviously varies in terms of uh, navies and how they support their engines, but you know, you've mentioned reliability. Talk to us a little bit about the reliability case you're making to the, to the Navy. Well, thank you. Relative, it's, it's reliability and then also availability, that my engine is going to work when I need it. Okay, so you're, you're in harm's way, you're on a combatant. A gas turbine has 98% availability, so that when you need it, it's there. And what you do is if uh, on a diesel, you're in probably in the low 90s. But say, for example, you're running on one gas turbine, it's 98% availability. If you have four diesels running at 92% each, you're down in the 70s. So when you need to run at high power and high speed, you're only available 70 plus percent of the time. So it's, it's simple math and it's uh, why you want to use a fewer amount of prime movers that have high reliability and availability. Um, and let me uh, ask you, uh, you know, I, which I do each time in terms of, you know, you guys are constantly looking at, you know, fielding various kinds of improvement. Any update in terms of, you know, because you guys do this with the aftermarket support you do for the engines, but you're also developing newer power plants. And there, I know that uh, like every jet engine maker, you guys also have modular improvements that both can be installed in the field, but also at the depot level. Talk to us a little bit about some of the upgrades uh, that, that you're gaining, you know, are particularly interesting to the Navy crowd here. Yeah, well, thank you. It is primarily our, our lightweight composite module is fully qualified, shock qualified by the Navy, and we have engineering change um, programs in those to put those on the DDG 51s, and then on the Austal, starting with LCS 32. They're very interested on the 50% weight reduction on that. And also, our power conversion group is also developing hybrid energy storage modules, which will be very effective on future ship, ship classes. So when you can have the pulse power loads that you can uh, simulate power and transmit it when you need it. And uh, let me ask you one last question. Uh, the Navy wants to grow to 355 ships. Obviously, it's in its plan. It wants to bring back some mothballed cruisers, for yeah. example, and retain some of the older DDGs in service in order to try to get there. Has has the Navy reached out to you guys in terms of service and support? Because obviously, uh, the, the any, you know any of the old cruiser power plants are a slightly older generation than they are on the DDG 51s or on the later ships. Have have they reached out to you to get some sort of service support package for some of those older power plants? They have. You know, we're supporting the Navy on their needs relative to the cruisers, you know, for the older technology to bring them over to some of the new parts as far as some of the engine uh, blades and buckets, you know, so we've supported them on that. And then also, too, on the DDG-51, the Navy is very pleased with the amount of operational hours that they're getting, that they're exceeding initial um, indications on how long those components will last. So I think the performance of the engine is really the thing that's really marking uh, to support the DDG-51. Rather than replacing parts, they're seeing that they're operating at uh, a lot longer operating hours than what they originally intended to do. And, uh, and uh, talk to us about how you guys are using big data in order to try to do that. We hear from the Vice Chief of Naval Operations, Bill Moran, who's going to be soon the Chief of Naval Operations, um, and others about how you know the Navy can better harness big data in order to be able to do better predictive maintenance. Um, talk to us a little bit about that big data piece of this and how you're working on the Navy, because there's always a challenge on how much of that data is your data, how much of that data is right. their data. But talk to us about how you guys are harnessing data and working with the Navy in order to, to get sort of mutual benefit out of that the end of the day. So our digital um, team is working with the Navy taking a look at pro propulsion system. It's not only the gas turbine, there's other equipment there, creating digital twins so that you can have quicker and better 
ideas as far as when an event could occur in life. But I do have to caution and say how that affects on our gas turbine. We tried talking to this, I think it was with Admiral Galinas, and about digital, and he goes, well, George, what's your availability and reliability? I said 98%. So then he says, why do I need digital? So in a way, our gas turbines have the reliability that digital may not be as much of a play on our gas turbines, but our technology and ability on the rest of the propulsion train, I think, is getting some attention. George Avizis, uh, the Director of uh, Business Development and Marketing at GE Marine. Sir, it's always a pleasure. Thanks very much, and best of luck to a very good Navy League. All right. Thank you, Vago. Appreciate it. Good seeing you again.